Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFP25 video. In today's video, I'm going to go over the top 10 best recruiting abilities you need in Dynasty mode. Before we get to the video, guys, as always, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Comment down below if you have any advice to add to any video, any other things. I'm going to go over 10. If you have anything beyond these 10 or anything to add on top of what I said, comment down below. Use the comment section like a public forum. It's been helping everybody out. The more knowledge we share, the better everyone's going to be all around and of course give this video a big thumbs up as always every like helps out the channel and the video do well so i greatly appreciate each of you that do it it takes a second of your time and it helps me out a lot can we get at least 250 likes in this video i haven't been setting like goals i'm gonna start doing that because i realize i've just been blindly asking for likes so let's try to hit a goal and of course if you haven't already follow me over on twitter it's a great place to just kind of stay in the community keep in touch learn more share information dm me etc and if you haven't already check out underdog my link down below will get you a great bonus so make sure you take advantage of that so you are ready for when the cfb and nfl season kick off we'll be sharing picks when that time comes but in the meantime get prepared so it's coming over to abilities now when doing abilities there remember there's limited amounts you can spend so that's why i think going over the top 10 is so important because a lot of times you may just start spending abilities like all over the place but it's very important that you do it the right way now i'm going over recruiting abilities this time this go around eventually i will give my top 10 best in general but this is going to be for recruiting purposes only for people who just care about recruiting so start at the top right let's go to ceo you want to keep this one in mind i know it's hard to get to but you want to be keeping this package in mind because you do want to save points you do cap on points so if you spend them too early and then you unlock this package you can't actually get it so the one from here that i love is dream school chance at insta commit when offering scholarship as their top school now i do want to rectify something a lot of people have been asking can you get insta commits without this package you can i've gotten them plenty of times with lsu but if you look at it georgia is one of the teams that actually gets the most insta commits because you can have this package and i believe they start with this package so keep that in mind this actually increases the chance so the importance of this thing, I know it sounds obvious, like, oh, you get an instant commit, cool. The importance of this package is how it basically locks you into a top five class every year if you are competent, because you can easily end up instant committing about five to six guys every single season with this package. And if you instant commit them, you don't have to allocate 50 hours a week to them or more. You don't have to fight for them. It pretty much gives you right off the rip some combination of five or six, four stars, and potentially a five star right off rip. So right off rip, you have the number one class, and then all you have to do is just casually do your regular recruiting process of 20 to 25 guys, plus what you get, and you're gonna always have a top five class, which just keeps you at the top ranks of recruiting, and it, it makes you, you don't have to fight. If you have a pretty, if you have a race where you're at number one, but there's a few guys pretty close to you, you may insta commit them right off rip and give no one else a chance at them. So this one's always important for that reason. Next, coming over to program builder, the one below it, still wanna be keeping this in mind. One that I really like is making inroads. Now, relationship builder as a whole, the whole package is pretty solid. My problem with the first one, upgrade your two best two pipelines. If your best two pipelines are five and like a four, or let's just say they're five, I don't know if you really get anything from that because it's not going to say six, right? It's not going to get, it's not going to go above that. So I don't know if you get anything from that. So, I mean, you have to do that one, I think, to get to the next one. So it kind of sucks, but that one's not overpowered in my opinion. Making inroads is the one I like here. Upgrade your school's five best pipelines by one tier. So let's say your first two are five and then your next three are four and three. That means that your fours will become fives and your threes will become fours. That essentially gives you a bunch of five and four to your pipelines which i really like so i i like that one a lot share the wealth tier three is my next one upgrade your school's five worst pipelines by one tier the reason i like this is because there's oftentimes a few people that i really like and my pipeline's either a one or a two and i don't have the best interest on them for that reason this will bring your twos up to threes your threes up to fours your ones up to twos this actually makes you a pretty strong recruiter across all of your pipelines instead of just your top ones which i i, I really like the next one's under the strong roots similar thing boost your primary pipeline don't care too much about that one in terms of i still wonder if it's my primary pipeline how much more you could really boost it what i do like is household name which is tier two boost the starting interest from recruits from your primary pipeline so the great the great thing about this is starting interest now some people commented like oh starting interest doesn't matter you just want to stay in their top eight and their top five and it'll come as it goes starting interest is like it's like a poker face especially in an online league offline league maybe not as much but an online league I've found myself in the same situation. I go to recruit a guy. I see Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, any of the bigger programs have a pretty marginal lead, like a pretty big margin on me. And I'm not even gonna try to recruit the guy. I'm like, ah, yeah, that's over. I'm not even gonna bother. He's from like, he's from that area, whatever. Having starting interest from my primary pipeline means people will have that same fear of me. I, want, I don't want people to fight for my recruit. Even if I have a steady lead, if people are fighting, I have to make sure that I'm monitoring it every week. I'm potentially putting a visit to secure my lead. 
if I just get starting interest boosted enough to where I scare people and also potentially get better chance at insta commits, right? Because it's higher bar and you're first. If I can get those chance of insta commits plus scaring people away, it really just opens up the field, right? It's like having a good, it's like having a good run game. That way your pass game can open up. It's the same concept. I love household name for that reason. The next one I like is hometown discount. Recruits from your primary pipeline gain extra influence boost. This is great because honestly, when you're looking at the recommended list or you're looking at players where you have high interest on, most of them probably come from one of your primary pipelines, if not one of your pipelines, but probably your primary. So this means that you get extra influence boost. So when you hard sell, when you send the house, when you soft sell, when you sway, all those things, when you do a visit, those people get an even bigger boost. So this just really clamps up your pipeline. And that's important because honestly, the biggest part in real life and in, in this game is secure the guys that you can always get, right? Like your pipeline are supposed to be yours. In some online leagues, I've seen guys come into other pipelines and steal players because you're recruiting better than them. Getting these boosts pretty much guarantees you that you can easily almost always get your pipeline players first and then focus on other players. And that keeps you in the game for, you don't wanna be losing your own pipeline players. That's the worst thing. Cause you're gonna struggle to get other pipelines. You don't want to be struggling to get your own so the next one i'm not going to go per position here i'm going to leave that up to you i'm going to give my basic advice here i'm going to be going on the packages themselves so all the packages across them are all the same it's just a matter of position in my opinion the most efficient thing to do considering you have capped points if you were to spend on only quarterbacks running backs and like kickers that would require 80 or 60 points right off there and then if you were to do the elite one that'd be 120 points spent which is like one fourth of your total points just on four positions i usually recommend if you can outside of maybe quarterback focus on the on the depth positions like o-line where you will probably you will need five starters and you're probably gonna want five depth guys so you're gonna be recruiting anywhere from five to ten o-linemen probably every year every other year so there's a position that by upgrading these packages and focusing on these positions you can easily give yourself an advantage on a lot of what you'll be recruiting same thing goes for d-line that applies to a lot of different players same thing goes with linebackers and dbs those positions are a bit more like widespread you're gonna be needing depth you're gonna be recruiting a lot of these like when you look at your end of your recruiting board you may end up recruiting one to two quarterbacks max two running backs maybe max but you will be recruiting like five to eight alignment you will be trying to recruit five to eight d linemen you may not win them all but that's what you're going to be fighting for so that's important so now for me my first one here is advanced look takes less time to scout this is a game changer uh if you've been doing this you know very quickly when you have to spend the full 30 versus the 20 it makes it so much easier to just recruit because that first that first purchase you get a good amount to see when you have to recruit when you takes less time to fully scout so that first purchase gets you like half their stats to make it easier and if you got to go for the full thing to see gems it's only going to cost you two scouting attempts versus three that goes a long way in being able to scout a lot more players especially like i said with o linemen for instance when you're over here and you're trying to do o linemen you're you have to look at left tackle right tackle left guard right guard center Plus, the first guys you do might be red gem bust. They may not be that great. So you got to recruit another set. You're, you could end up being scouting like 20 to 30 of these guys to actually get a good idea of who you want to recruit. Less time to scout goes a long way. Otherwise, you might be blind doing it, right? Especially when you're a lower tier program. The next one that I like is most influential, of course, the next one. Recruiting actions give a bonus. Same thing to the other package from before. I like when they give a bonus because that means that for every hard sell I send, if you package this up with Program Builder and this, you're going to be getting increased interest on everything, which basically means teams that don't have these packages or are below you to begin with, they may get this much. You may be getting this much for everything you do, which means everything you do is going to be so much more impactful. And that's where like it gets rid of that skill gap in the sense, right? So the skill gap first is how well do you recruit? How do you allocate? Let's say you're doing that better and then you get these boosts. This really just puts them out of reach because nothing they do can be, no matter how good they're at recruiting, these packages will outweigh what they're doing because you're by default getting extra. The next one I like is always be recruiting. As you guys can see, a lot of these, these this first tier is really great. Always recruiting, increase weekly recruiting hours. This is great, especially when you need to do a, a big push. You can get your recruiting hours up to like 70, which is great because when everyone else is fighting for you with 50 points and you have 70 and or 60, it gets very hard very quickly because you could be doing a, a hard sell and a soft sell. You could be doing a hard sell and like a DM and a send a message, right? You could be doing all that while they're only doing one total thing for 40 or 50. This very quickly keeps you ahead. So this one, obviously you can't be doing this for everyone. You can't be going through every position group and doing this. This is one of the ones where, you know, you want to be great at that, like having great wide receivers. You want to make sure you get to that tier three. So you're always just ahead in that game. When you want a player, you can definitely fight for them. Now, the last one here, magnetic personality. I like all four of these, obviously, for obvious reasons. Increased starting interest, same concept as before. While I love it as a recruiting action, make sure you use it on positions where you really need it so that it can, and remember these all stack. Like just because you have it in another place doesn't mean it doesn't double up. These all stack. So you get the increased starting interest plus the package above, which gave you the increased starting interest from Program Builder. You combine those two and you're going to get great leads for A, insta commits and B, just to scare people away. 
keep your interest high, make it much easier for you to get to the next tier and not be locked out. And my last one here, and again, this is what this is like, I'm keeping this in mind too, is that getting to tier four on an elite recruiter is pretty hard because you're gonna have to spend 8888. So that's 32 just to get there. The one I like best here because of the point factor of it is lasting impression. Gain additional interest for every 10 hours spent. So let's say you have the package where you can spend up to 60 or 70 points. And then for every 10, you get an additional interest boost. You're going to be combining that with the program interest, with the interest from, with the extra hours from above, you're going to be getting maximum benefits on these positions. You want to make sure that you are stacking them. So if you do get the O-line one, make sure you are stacking with the lasting impression. Now, while the other ones are good, my school grades have a larger impact. It's good. Boost pipeline bonus. We have bonuses from the other, the other packages already and boost ideal grades. These are all good, but I don't think they're overpowered. And honestly, for eight points, these above are five. You can get the full thing for 20 versus 32 and you have limited points. I honestly would probably only go for that first one because it's quick and easy to get at eight without having to buy the other ones. The lasting impression is the last of the bunch. Those are my 10. Now, obviously, for obvious reasons, a lot of the recruiting packages are on here. That makes that makes the most sense. But you want to be factoring them in. Now, remember, there are some honorable mentions. Like when you come over to strategists, there are some like boost complimentary visits. Visits have a bigger impact. Mind reader ability. Mind reader, my only issue with mind reader for anyone asking is that you have to have a you have to do a visit first, right? You may not. I only do a visit on a few of my prospects sometimes if I have a steady lead and I'm winning. So first and foremost, it's only going to be a few visits to begin with. And it's an increased chance to learn, not a guaranteed. So you can do four visits and learn none. And you have to spend 32 to get down there. And on top of that, you may do a visit for week seven and then recruit the guy by week five. Never got to see. You may do a visit for week nine, recruit the guy by five. Never got to see. You may do a visit for week five, but someone else wins the battle. Didn't matter. You may actually get the mind reader to work. He's normal, but you're already in the top three and it's almost over. So it's like, do you finish it at that point? What do you do? Back out? Like it comes to a point where it's like, I haven't really been able to see how beneficial it can be. Although I think it can be very useful if you have the points to spend and you don't care. But we're talking about the 10 like must have type recruiting abilities. This, These are not one of them to be quite honest with you. And if you look around, you'll see there's a few others that kind of tie in a little bit, but I think those are the ones that you absolutely need to be an elite recruiter. Like I said, I will be making a video going over the top 10 overall, like the ones that I'm, I'm no matter what going to buy and make my way there. And that that's, that's what I recommend. Now, of course, guys, that is it for the video. Comment down below what you would fit into this top 10 recruiting. I want to know, let me know what you think I missed in this video. Of course, it's all personal preference. Everyone has different teams, different programs. A lower tier program may want much more pipeline bonuses than maybe I mentioned, but let me know down below, add some advice, use the comment section like a forum. If this video helped you out, as always, if you show support, like the video, it takes a second and helps the channel out a lot and subscribe if you're new. Let's keep getting there. We're getting closer to 30K. We're about 5K away. I think we can make it in a few weeks. Well, let's hope. And yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.